Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone joining from different regions. Thank you very much for attending the session today. Um, we'll start. This webinar is about food safety performance benchmarking and charting your course in the global market. We will discuss the impact of food safety performance in a company's competitiveness, risk management, compliance, and overall strategic direction, and also focus on solutions that can enhance food safety performance monitoring and assessment. So let's start with uh, what we hear from experts regarding food safety procedures. Food safety executives need to be aware of how well their company is performing in terms of food safety compared to industry standards and competitors. What we have heard from industry leaders we work with is that they already have established some internal key performance indicators so they, that they can measure their food safety performance. Such indicators are the number of their internal incidents. How they do that is through a classification system they have developed based on the severity of each incident. This process, though, may be time consuming and needs a lot of manual effort. And although it's crucial, the regular delivery of such a report is not feasible on a very frequent basis. And although comparing these performance metrics to other companies and brands seems to be challenging, many of these companies have taken this extra mile. We know this for a fact as some of our partners have developed benchmarking processes internally, as it helps to inform senior leadership to make more accurate and informative decisions. And this is through identifying any potential problems with the whole industry or a certain product type or even a hazard type. Um, they were developing such a benchmarking report through manual collection of data and manual reports for multiple brands and subsidiaries. We collaborated with them to help them make this process more automated by putting together the parameters that they need to compare their brand to their own ecosystem, competitors at an origin and a hazard type level as well. So the main challenge that we have identified regarding this process is that it is a very manual and time consuming process. Collecting, combining, processing and visualizing a bunch of data is what it takes for food safety executives to really understand how the company measures up against industry standards and competitors. It's like putting together all the puzzle pieces to see the big picture of their food safety performance. So what we will focus in this webinar? In this webinar, we will discuss how companies like Bimbo do food safety performance benchmarkings, which KPIs are important, which of the key performance indicators then take into consideration to do so. We will discuss where they find the data to compare to their industry peers uh, and competitors as well. So which data sources they're looking at, which data is available out there. We will discuss to which extent horizon scanning tools may help in this process. Do they use them? Do they not? And of course, we will see some representative uses scenarios from such a benchmarking module and discuss their applicability. Moving forward, let me welcome our panel speakers who will share their valuable insights and reflections with us. Uh, as you may have seen on the invitation, we had three speakers for this webinar. Kevin, unfortunately, couldn't make it due to an urgent matter. We hope to have him as a speaker to our next webinar, though. We have our other two amazing experts in this panel with us, first being Carmela Rashid, who is Global Director of Regulatory Affairs at Bimbo QSR, and she's proficient in establishing risk manager procedures for food manufacturing and quality control. Uh, benchmarking risks to the food supply help, helps her organization anticipate regulatory non-compliances. Carmela, welcome. And next, we have Iraklis Posnakidis. Iraklis is the software engineering lead at Agrono. He specializes in web application development and engineering with extensive expertise as a software engineering lead. And from various teams, he has been a part of. Uh, and a significant, of course, contributor to the benchmarking tools development and success. Iraklis, welcome. Thank you very much, Angela. I am very happy to be here with you today to discuss such a crucial business matter and give you a glimpse of our new benchmarking module. Uh, now, a few words about how my team and I were involved in such a module within Fudakai. You see, 
During our cooperation with our customers, we have been hearing of many needs and pain points regarding their food safety performance benchmarking and an efficient way to achieve this. Some of the questions we were asked were, how can I inform my board of directors where my company stands against the industry? Or which hazard affects the industry and my brand the most so I can improve my food safety plans? Another question was, where my company's strategy plan will head according to the emerging risks that affect my brands? And finally, where do my suppliers of a specific region stand against both the regional industry and the global industry? That is why we were called to develop a new powerful tool in Fudakai that allows you to view instantly benchmarking information and charts, download analytical data files, and share insights with directors and C-level executives. Thank you very much, Heracles, for sharing this very valuable information also for our audience to know. Um, and we would I would like to ask a few words from our speakers. I would like both of you to take a couple of minutes and tell us what you expect from today's panel. Carmela? Um, I expect to uh, share information as to how we're, um, how my organization has been using benchmarking tools, um, perhaps share some past experiences and what I learned from those. Um, and uh, also, uh, hear back from our audience as to if they have any questions about my experiences or my team's experiences using some of these tools. Amazing, Carmela, thank you very much. I think this would be very important and um, you have like a lot to offer in this conversation from your experience. Um, what about you, Eric, Well, from my side, I'm looking forward to highlight and clarify the aforementioned needs regarding food safety performance benchmarking and also share with the audience an efficient way to cover those needs. Amazing. Thank you both so much for your input in this. So it's time for the big reveal of this webinar. Uh, basically, we will focus on how we should put this technology in place for making more informative decisions and taking corrective measures related to food safety performance and competition. Some examples of the high level questions that we could try to answer through these webinars are, uh, which are the typical metrics that a company can use to measure its food safety performance? Can this be the number of internal incidents, the number of external recalls, number of fraud incidents reported? Uh, as mentioned, uh, many uh, food manufacturers already use some of these uh, metrics for their internal uh, evaluation that they are, have developed. Uh, also, which of this information can be also discovered online in order to compare our company's performance to others? Is this information sufficient? Can we find all the data that we need out there? And how can horizon scanning tools help us automate this data collection, comparison and visualization tasks? Do organizations use them? Are they making their lives more easier? What else do they have to offer that maybe we haven't thought about until now? But uh, of course, we also would like to invite our audience to participate in this webinar. So I will open the first poll right now. And uh, the question around this poll would be, which are some critical food safety performance KPIs for you? So the critical food safety performance for our audience. Give me some moment to open the first poll. Great. You will have about a minute in order to submit your answers for this uh, poll. Um, of course, your contribution is very important to us in order to identify which are the critical food safety performance KPIs for you. And uh, I think the poll results will be visible. So we can share them with you in order to identify which was the highest uh, ranking of all of them. We have a couple of different options. I see the numbers going up and down. <laughs> Two seconds left. Okay. 
So uh, the poll has been completed. Uh, we have 60% uh, of the participants who took uh, part in this poll. And as I see, the top KPIs that were rated in this poll are the number of recalls and the number of incidents related to specific hazard type and products. Very interesting insights. Thank you all for submitting your answers to this. We can also share the results later on if you wish. Um, and uh, we will touch upon this uh, during the webinar, of course. So moving forward. Next, we would like to invite one of our panelists, Carmela, to share the importance of uh, their food safety performance, as well as the top challenges they face during this process. Carmela, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, these are just some of the, the couple of points that I wanted to share. And so from um, my vantage point being regulatory in the regulatory capacity, um, dealing with a rapidly changing regulatory atmosphere is um, a huge reason why uh, monitoring food safety issues is, is a tantamount to everything that we do. Um, particularly if you are trying to maintain a certain level of confidence with your consumer base. Um, so um, I can tell you that um, in 2019 versus 2019 to now, our regulatory atmosphere has ramped up considerably. Um, so um, having a, a tool like, like uh, Foodakai really has helped me tremendously in keeping pace and keeping track with everything from um, raw material hazards, if there's metals or plastics in raw materials um, that we need to watch out for, to um, food, food fraud incidences, um, mislabeling, gray market theft, all, all, all type of things that we need to keep track of. Um, and so uh, since I work in a global capacity, you can imagine that that's um, even a bigger task. Um, the second is, uh, I think I've mentioned before, maintaining consumer trust um, is actually a tool for maintaining, co maintaining consumer trust and to prevent harm to company reputation. Um, we look into trades every day and we see names that we're familiar with um, who are having to um, really correct and really do a lot of work because it's been harmed to their reputation because of, of something that's happened from a food safety standpoint. So. Um, that's why um, for us, for my organization, it's extremely important um, to know where we stand, uh, where the hazards originate from, and um, how to communicate that and what we can do about it. Amazing, Carmela. Thank you for this. As I understand from what you're saying, it's very important uh, to know, to be aware of the regulatory changes in the in the industry there. And of course, to also be aware of uh, any hazards and any harms that can be done to branding, let's say, for example. And as this follows also to consumer getting a product that may not have been um, maintained correctly, for example, uh, and or, not, or food safety parameters have not been taken into consideration for that as they should. Great, thank you so much for this. And uh, also, uh, we would like you to talk a little bit on the top three challenges in food safety performance uh, procedure. Um, so uh, this is this is an ever changing list uh, for me personally, but I can tell you um, these three have not moved from my um, <laughs> from my list of to dos for the past I would say year and a half. Uh, number one being lack of industry synergies. So um, in terms of food safety, uh, one of the big topics that uh, we deal with are allergies, um, how they're labeled, how they're communicated, uh, even how they're tested. And so when you look what happens from import export or from just a country to country standpoint, um, you may have uh, one country say, well, we don't recognize that testing scheme. And these are allergies that we recognize. Um, you have to label it and you may have another country that may not be as stringent. So you have to really look at, okay, how do we get uh, the industry as a whole to kind of mesh uh, with regard to that? And when you are uh, looking at different data tools, you might get different data sets, right? 
So um, one of the challenges for us internally is uh, how to uh, create a cohesive environment given this lack of inter industry synergy in order to um, make sure our, our products are packaged correctly, they're labeled correctly, and um, both parties at the end of the uh, import export chains are satisfied and they're happy and we're in compliance. Um, number two, gaps in supplier information, those updates, uh, a lot of companies rely on the supplier to update their raw materials given the regulatory framework. Um, there are some times where that does not happen. And so you have to almost do double duty to check with your supplier and make sure that those uh, relationships are intact to say, hey, um, have you guys updated our uh, data sheets? Are the COAs data, uh, uh, updated? Are we testing for the same things? Or uh, has a testing protocol changed according to any regulatory change that may have happened um, in a given country? And then um, <laughs> mentioned before import export activities, um, looking at how those, those requirements may differ. And so um, what happens to, to, to us all the time is we may have a list of countries that we want to export to uh, uh, from a single or maybe two or, two or three different countries. And you're talking about a litany of different um, panel uh, panels that have to go in that package or the languages have to be multiple and you have to have the real estate on a package in order to accomplish that. So, um, and what I've seen a lot, particularly um, in 2021, um, in the latter half of 2020 is you had people who were um, in this whole industry that were skipping that part and wondered why they were actually in a recall state. So um, those are sorts, sorts of the things that we're seeing um, that are challenges for us in the industry. Amazing, Carmela. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I understand it has to do a lot with the data that are available and the compliances that if they are followed, the regulatory compliances or not, in order to be able to also identify uh, even for your import or your export about the food safety requirements that may be uh, out there. Is there something that has helped you through this? Because as I understand, it must be, a, it is a challenging and also very complicated way, actually complicated uh, way of trying to identify all these challenges and key information. Is this something that has helped you so far with this? I think what's helped greatly is um, having to train um, our internal quality and food safety experts in, in, in using this particular platform. And um, I, I did just a, just a vocal poll about this a few months ago and the feedback that I received was we really like going to the homepage and seeing this hit list of which countries had which issues, when was it discovered, and it's all uh, being aggregated in real time. And so um, there is no reason why someone cannot open the platform and say, okay, uh, we have an issue with the say buckwheat coming from Romania. And if, if we know we have bakeries that are importing uh, that particular ingredient, it immediately sends off a, a, a red flag to say, hey, we may need to connect with our suppliers or look in the system and see which of our suppliers could be at risk. So um, it's just, in, instead of, you know, the, the tedious um, type of works that we were doing a few, just a few years ago, it's very helpful to be able to open a platform and just see uh, on the daily, it being updated and refreshed accordingly. So we know where we stand um, just from first glance. And this even before we even do the, the real digging and um, looking at some of the data set, other data sets that's, that's available to us. Amazing. So it also saves some time and effort and make sure that you are not missing anything from the data that is available out there. And I understand that also supplier assessment is very important in order to be aware because sometimes there might be information missing out there or even the suppliers you mentioned may not be aware of something. So it's always good to be a step ahead in these uh, situations. <laughs> We're in a symbiotic relationship, so uh, that, that's kind of the way it goes, right? But yes, it does happen. Great, Carmela. Thank you very much for sharing uh, this. Uh, we also have another poll for our audience to take part in. Uh, we would like in this one to see which are the food safety performance KPIs that you would like to know about your competitors and industry peers as well. I'm going to share the other poll so you can submit your answers.
Okay, I think it's ready. And you can start submitting your answers and voting for the most important KPI to know about competitor and industry peers. We'll give this about a minute. And we have our results. Thank you all so much for participating. Um, of course, we have the top one again is the number of incidents related to specific type of hazard and products. And there's a head-to-head -head comparison and the fight between the number of recalls and the number of food fraud incidents, as we can see. Amazing, very insightful. And thank you all for participation in this poll. Great, let's save those. And moving forward, now it's Iraklis' moment to present. Iraklis will share three user scenarios that offer the insights professionals need regarding food safety performance benchmarking. Iraklis, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Angela. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, we have been hearing of many needs and pain points regarding our customers' food safety performance benchmarking and an efficient way to achieve this. So now let's see together more practically how we can perform our food safety benchmarking by addressing three real world scenarios. For starters, the first requirement to perform a useful benchmarking is to set up our desired ecosystems. Via the supplier's customization module of Fudakai, we can easily set up company lists. Each one of those corresponds to an ecosystem. For example, here we have created two lists. The first list corresponds to our own ecosystem, which includes right now one company. And we have created a second list, which represents our competition uh, ecosystem and includes two companies. Now, the next step is to configure our preferred market or industry, if you like, by easily setting up ingredient groups, which may contain any desired ingredients and products that interest us. So by taking those two easy and fast steps, we are ready to apply our benchmarking scenarios. So let's get a deep dive to our first scenario, which is how our brand and its ecosystem is performing in a specific industry, such as the beverages. Here we can see the main filter section of our benchmarking module, and we have two main and required fields. The first field corresponds to the, tar to the market that we want to target. For example, here we have applied both non-alcoholic beverages and alcoholic beverages. And the other required field has to do with the ecosystem that we want to benchmark. As of now, we want to benchmark and compare our ecosystem against the whole industry. So we apply those two filters and we hit the apply filters button. Once we apply the uh, once we hit the apply filters button, one of the main from of the much information that we can see in our benchmarking module is a very indicative chart which represents the cases per year. In this chart, we're breaking down the cases that have occurred during the selected time frame, whereas the default is four years from now. So we can see that for each year, we have the comparison between our own ecosystem and the whole industry. That's how easily, that's how easily we can perform the first scenario and have our benchmarking report. Now, Let's see, in a second scenario, how we can compare our brand and its ecosystem with specific companies, specific competitors. Uh, as you remember, we had previously created a second list, which represents 
our competitors. So if we apply the same filters for the market we are targeting and our own ecosystem, we can apply to the compared to field, the competitor ecosystem. So when we hit the apply filters button, we can see much information, much indicative information. And now, for example, we get a section which displays the hazard types comparison chart. In this chart, we can see the cases that have occurred, but now they're broken down according to each hazard type. For example, here we see that we had four cases in our ecosystem regarding physical hazards, whereas the industry had only one. Now let's go to our third scenario, which is quite interesting. Uh, you see the benchmarking tool uh, isn't only about benchmarking our own ecosystem and comparing it to uh, the competition. We can also compare the different units, the different regions and operations within our own company. So by utilizing my supplier's uh, customization module of Fudakai, we can easily create, as we did before, some company lists that semantically, as in this case, represent regions. So we have created the North America ecosystem of our company and the Latin America ecosystem of our company. So if we go back to the benchmarking module, we can apply those two different uh, lists and compare them and see the results. So when we hit the apply filters button, we can see the cases per year chart and the hazard types comparison chart. It, it's quite interesting here, as we can see that in year 2021, North America division had no uh, cases occurred uh, as in contrast with the Latin America uh, ecosystem that had many cases. Also a very uh, interesting insight is that in this case, we have cases only that are related to physical hazards. And we see the comparison between our two uh, divisions. But uh, that's not all regarding the functionalities of our benchmarking module. So if we proceed to the next slide, we will see uh, much more sections that give valuable insights uh, via our benchmarking report. As you can see at the upper section of our benchmarking module screen, uh, we display some main KPI boxes. The upper KPI box displays the cases that have occurred during the last 12 months. In this case, we can see that we have one case for our ecosystem and 63 for the whole industry. Below this KPI box, we have separated the top hazards that have occurred and have broken down according to each hazard type. So we can see, for example, that for uh, the last 12 months, the top physical hazard was glass fragments. Below those KPI boxes, we also have generic information for the time frame we have applied. And we see that we have an overall cases trend chart. So in this chart, we include all the cases that have been generated through this report, and we see how they trend across this time frame. Now in the next slide, we can see the core of our benchmarking module. Uh, this is about the critical cases table. Uh, the critical cases table is nothing more than a table that contains all the cases that are fetched and generated for our benchmarking and includes more details such as the title of the case, uh, the published date of the case, which suppliers were related to this case, which countries were involved in this case, and then we have the hazard type, specific hazard, ingredient type, and specific ingredient. I would like to highlight that this table is fully searchable and filterable and exportable. And by exportable, we mean that when we hit the download data button that you see here, we can download all this information in a custom Excel format in order to utilize it in our own internal workflow. And last but not least, do you remember, of course, the two charts that we uh, saw earlier in our presentation, which is the cases per year chart and the hazard types comparison chart. These charts, even though they are very, they contain very much information, they are also interactive. And what do we mean by that? 
that if we want to select a specific cluster, in this case, a specific year, in case we click on the cluster of 2021, we will see in the next slide that a new breakdown chart is displayed, which contains the cases, but broken down for the specific year of 2021 and displays all the specific companies and the corresponding cases. The same, of course, happens as we can see in the next slides for the hazard types comparison chart, where if we click uh, the cluster of physical hazard type, we see the breakdown analysis for this hazard type for its specific company and their corresponding cases. And that's all from me and the benchmarking module. So, Angela, back to you. Thank you very much, Heracles, for sharing this insightful information about the benchmarking. As we understand, it is very customizable and very easy to use your own metrics in order to perform such a benchmarking report. Um, so since we know, and also Carmela mentioned, the suppliers is something very important and cru crucial to, man to monitor, they can easily add the list of their suppliers in order to do so. And they can also break it down by hazard level, Heracles, right? in order mm -hmm. to identify also which is the prominent hazard for each incident. Exactly. Great, thank you so much. And now it's the time for food safety performance benchmarking reflection, in which uh, we will look uh, at some of the specific use cases and Carmela will give us her expert reflection on this and how this was how, how this looks to you, which use case is practical and relevant, which seems a little bit far-fetched, and what else would you expect to see? Um, I took some time and I gave this a, some real thought. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> in thinking about these, and in terms of um, practicality, practicality and relevancy, um, the use of the critical cases table um, is number one, um, hands down. Um, this is a tool that you know will be frequently used and that I've used myself. Um, having access to just this list of, okay, where did this come from? Where are the risks? Which, which of our suppliers may have had an issue um, with, um, metals or other form materials in their raw in, in their raw materials that we need to be aware of and where in the world are they being exported from. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, Far-fetched, um, in thinking about uh, comparing our brand um, and its ecosystem with other companies, I thought about that and I, I think, I do think it's possible, but I would like to see more increased granularity around some of the data retrieved. So um, especially in, in, in the cases of, of um, critical recalls, um, it would be a great learning for us to have more uh, granularity around, okay, what did we learn? What were the specific causes? How far down the chain um, did these issues uh, originate from? And in looking at that, and in, in, as we start looking at um, uh, comparing performances, um, were they fixed? Did they just sit there? Um, what was done to self-correct? If there are any corrections made, um, are the same suppliers uh, being used or have they been reprimanded in any way? So um, that one I have to think about long and hard. Um, additional expectations. Um, Nothing really additional. I, I do expect to see communications of this data uh, being available to us in real time. And it's super critical for my organization since we are global. And so if I wake up at Eastern Standard Time and it's six o'clock in the morning here, um, our European, um, my European teammates are already having to address issues uh, well within the day. And so having access to real-time data and information um, is the difference between um, a possible recall or uh, catching it, catching something before um, it, it leaves our facility. So those are just some of the few things I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much, Carmela, and for the effort and for the insights. Very valuable for uh, your reflection regarding the benchmarking. 
Um, we also can hear from Miracles his reflection on Carmela's reflection. <laughs> so Miracles. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much, Carmela, for uh, your very valuable reflections. And I am pretty happy that Carmela has identified the value of having a fast real-time table analysis of critical cases. And to be honest, this was the core of our benchmarking model development. As for the granularity of data required for benchmarking different units, it is something that challenged us too at first. However, as we constantly evolve, we integrate with as many data sources as possible and we create them as soon as possible in order to achieve this granularity. Now, time and instant actions, as you mentioned, Carmela, are two very significant attributes that lead to an efficient workflow. Real-time communication of data is something that we had come up with during the wireframing of our module. Uh, it is not yet released, but it is included in our next year's development roadmap due to the fact that fast and effective communication can always prevent many unwanted results from our food safety performance. Great. Thank you, Rekli, so much, and Carmela, both of you. Um, let's give the floor also to our audience for any questions they may have for Carmela and you, Rekli. Um, let's see if we have any submitted questions so far. Please feel free to type your questions on the Q&A session so our panelists can answer. We have a question in the poll. Give me a moment. So um, one of the questions is, as we can see, since you are integrated with multiple data sources, how do you tackle the issues of duplicate issues? I think, Eric, is this for you? I think they, yeah, that's for me. Uh, well, very interesting question, and uh, we have put uh, very much effort on that. Well, uh, certainly we have the overhead that comes up with collecting data from multiple data sources. This issue causes multiplication of cases that significantly affects our benchmarking results. But uh, many credits go to both our data curation team and our software engineering team for handling such an issue by deduplicating incidents following a multi-step but fast filtering algorithm so that we result into realistic counts and results. Amazing. Thank you, Eclis. Um, We also have another question. Um, I, th I think this one is for you, Carmela. Um, do senior management, like uh, chief executive officer or board of directions, ask you and her, your colleagues for such benchmarking results? Is that the question is if they do? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, every month, um, each team within our organization, um, it, and that's quality and food safety, we have to submit um, and give that visibility to our senior senior executives. So our, our executives are well aware of all of our quality and or food safety activities. Um, and that includes our KPIs. It includes, um, you know, what's going on in, in the bakeries themselves in terms of efficiencies. Um, includes everything, even sanitation. So all that is all encompassing. Um, we recognize that um, food safety is not just one segment. Food safety is everyone's responsibility, right? So um, absolutely, um, we, we communicate quite frequently in that arena. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there you also, I think you answer the next question is about how often do you perform benchmarking procedures? Is there a specific timeline you're following frequency? Um, I, I think, I think, and I'm speaking from our, my organization in particular, um, internally, uh, which is, you know, in, in our, in our internal teams, uh, our benchmarking happens, um, extremely frequently. We have um, a process where, and I know in one of our regions, uh, we do a, a comprehensive benchmarking quarterly. Um, in some teams, it happens every month. Um, tools like this allows us to do it um, every week sometimes. So it depends on uh, what, what kind of suppliers we have access to. Um, so we can be able to paint a picture, a cohesive picture regionally of what's happening. Um, so we can be better informed as to, okay, how do we address food fraud situations? Um, if we have an issue with a supplier or if we have an issue with a distributor even that's um, doing something food fraud or maybe um, adulterating product, uh, we, we have to know about it. But um, we, it depends on our regions and the circumstances. But um, the one thing we do have in common is we have the tools um, we have we have this at our beck and call. We have a lot of people who work extremely hard um, and they're curious also to get that information. So we are better informed so we don't have anything happen. <laughs> um, um, and we can maintain um, a, a high level of accountability. Amazing. Thank you, Carmela, for sharing that. Um, we also have... Another question, I think um, this is for you, Heracles. Um, so how about understanding the food safety performance of whole product categories on benchmarking? Um, I guess uh, this question focuses on product categories and not specific products, as you understand it. Yes, uh, it's for product categories as it is written, yes. Uh, well, I guess this um, has to do with uh, each company and how much they want to dive uh, deep in the benchmarking process. So uh, in case, uh, the important thing is that via tools such as our benchmarking module, you can do both. You can have a safety performance benchmarking for both product categories and for very specific ingredients. So I guess uh, then it has to do with uh, what whichever company may desire its time. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And another question from the audience is uh, regarding the benchmarking, if the benchmarking data set also includes anonymized data, from uh, partners or it's using data sources uh, that other modules are using as well so far? Uh, well, regarding this matter, we are currently uh, don't uh, include anonymized data uh, from our clients. Uh, we follow the same logic as we do with the rest of our modules, so the logic remains the same. But we're in the process of considering this matter too in order to maybe include some anonymized data. Thank you, Eracles. And uh, I think there we there is a last question. Uh, it is again about you, Eracles. Um, If there is a way of classifying incidents based on the severity level of each incident. Well, very interesting question. Um, this is something that or something similar that we have also considered when designing the module. However, it's not yet implemented due to the complexity and the very careful design that is required. Of course, in case we receive a very significant feedback about it, we'll include it much earlier in our development roadmap. Amazing, thank you. Great, I don't think we have any questions, any other questions so far. Let me double check. Okay, I think that was it. So let's move forward to the value of the food safety performance benchmarking. So uh, 
by looking at the potential of such solution and what we have heard from Miracles and Carmela so far regarding benchmarking, the question is, do we need such digital and visualization benchmarking tools? What will help us understand and include them in the current workflows? Um, from this conversation, what I get is that such a tool could add value and support the benchmarking efforts. Um, but of course, I would like our experts to share their opinion on this. Carmela, any thoughts? I do have a couple of thoughts. So, um, very glad. <laughs> of course, I do. Um, in terms of the first bullet point, um, there's a huge need for these sort of visual benchmarking tools. And what I found in my career is, it's one thing to discuss and verbally, you know, convey what's happening um, in terms of food safety issues. It's one. It's another thing entirely to have it in a charted format to where people can actually see it. And a lot of people are visual learners. And so once it's presented in such a way that it's, it's you, you, you convey and you understand, okay, this is where we are. This is where we need to be. Um, this is an issue for us. You automatically understand the risk, right? And so it helps us learn more about not only um, the potential of a food safety crisis it also helps us understand um, principles such as traceability, uh, such as accountability, such as if there's other areas in the organization that perhaps need strengthening, um, we have those conversations. Um, so there's a definite need, especially if you need to report on a frequent basis, like we spoke about before. I think one of the questions addressed that. Um, it's been a, a it's been a game changer. Um, in terms of um, current workflows, I think with anything that, that you have access to that's new to you in terms of a digital platform, I think key is training. Um, so people are not intimidated or afraid to use something that may perhaps be new to them. And it's also repetition. Um, once you get the hang of using something frequently enough, it becomes um, second nature. And so um, when you have access to data and you know exactly which buttons to push, uh, how to format, how to export and put from one sheet into another, that uh, becomes a quite a neat tool to use. But it, it that also comes with proper training um, and giving yourself some um, room to learn and um, also um, you know, looking at it from that perspective. I think it's very helpful. Great, Carmela, thank you so much for this and for your input. Um, Iraklis, what are your thoughts on this? Do you have anything to share? Uh, well, from the discussion that we had today, and I'm very glad that Carmela and I agree uh, on both, uh, both bullet points, it's pretty clear that it is quite crucial to utilize such digital and visual benchmarking tools that help you save time and ensure quality. The first thing to help us understand and utilize such tools is to, to be totally aware of our pain points and needs. So by utilizing carefully designed KPIs, we're able to identify the need and then by listening to market experts and our trusted advisors, I think we will finally reach the solution. So it's always about teamwork and working together, as I understand. Great. Thank you both so much uh, for your input and uh, reflections on this. So we are close to the end of the webinar, and we will do our usual takeaway question, which we believe is very important in order to leave this webinar with something, the one thing, the only one thing that you would keep from today's conversation, what would it be? Carmela? I, I think the statement that I always uh, keep close is information is king um, from a regulatory standpoint um, and food safety and quality as well. Um, I personally do not believe there's there's a such thing as having too much 
um, information. Uh, maybe that's because uh, I'm a self-professed nerd in, in that aspect, but when you are armed with the uh, right information at the right time um, in addressing the, the right um, or relevant issue, um, information is king. So that's the statement I'd like to leave you with. Thank you so much, Carmela. What about you, Eracles? Well, I'm going to add up to what we previously mentioned, is that uh, the most important thing is to distinguish and know and clarify our needs and pain points. Uh, also, that in combination with the assurance of the quality and the time saving, uh, I see that there is much thirst to the market regarding uh, such tools in order to have very efficient benchmarking processes. Great. Thank you both. And also, if I had to keep one thing from today's webinar is that there is a need out there for such benchmarking performance uh, procedures and that it really helps uh, organization in different food safety aspects. Um, so maybe working together towards something may be valuable for both sides, either to save time, efforts and make things more efficient for all the experts out there that are facing this need and are looking to get such information out of uh, this benchmarking procedure. Uh, I think that is it from our side, guys. Now the next and final step is that if any on the audience or even from our experts is interesting is interested to try out maybe such a tool and to choose to competitors to benchmark their company's food safety performance against theirs, they can scan this QR code in order to get access to that and get to understand a little bit on a little bit better on what we're talking about today. I think that's all from my side. I don't know if Carmela, or at least you have to um, mention something. For me, it was delightful having you and hosting this webinar for you and our audience. Um, anything else to share, to add before we close this webinar? No, I just want to say thank you um, um, for inviting me um, to have this discussion. Um, I, I think, it, I hope it's valuable for the folks out there watching and um, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carmela, as well, for your effort and for joining. It, it was a pleasure for us to having you on this panel and sharing all this information and insights that you did. You're a professional in what you're doing, so thank you so much for that. Thank you. Uh, Agile, you have been a very amazing host. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, it was a very nice experience, and uh, I'm very happy that we managed to have so many insights and have this very creative discussion among us. Thank you very much. Thank you as well, Ericles, for sharing the insights and your expert view on this. So that being said, um, I will wish a good night, good day, good evening to everyone out there, depending on where they're based on. And hopefully this was uh, insightful. And um, for the one that's registered, you will also receive the recording after this uh, session. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.